All right, this is George from G-Sharp Design. Uh, I wanna walk you through uh, what goes into making a record cover uh, that has quite a bit of Photoshop layering involved in it. Full disclosure, this is my record, my band's uh, new record that's about to come out. So I did the, uh, you know, obviously all the art direction and the actual execution. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to, you know, walk everybody through uh, what it takes to arrive at something like this. Now, this entire project was done in Photoshop. Um, so we'll just stay in that program. Uh, so this is the final product. And I'm going to turn this off uh, and then show you the individual layers one by one and kind of talk about what's going on. So let's walk it all the way back. So this is the very base layer. This is just a flat uh, gray, dark gray, not quite rich black, but dark gray background. And we'll kind of stack everything on top of it. So let's start uh, with the very first layer, which is this archival photo. This was taken from uh, the Library of Congress's Flickr feed, which is actually a great place to find public domain, kind of vintage uh, archival photography. Um, this record has a lot of songs about bars and, you know, obviously the record's called Pour It Out. So there's, you know, the, the image is kind of on the nose, but I really liked that the photo had all these people looking a little bit different, different expressions on their face because the record has all these songs that are, are, you know, kind of, they, they vary in, in the way that, uh, you know, the moods they take and the colors they, they have. So I, I liked that there's a lot of different faces happening. You know, you've got this guy over here who's uh, on the right. He's he's kind of like disheveled and really needs that drink. Then the guy next to him kind of looks mischievous and he's kind of sizing up the bartender. And the woman next to him is kind of curious and interested in what's going on. Maybe wants a drink of her own. So there's uh, a lot of different um, kind of character happening in this photo, which is why I was drawn to it. But there's also this kind of singular focus activity of pouring uh, this drink, which obviously tied in thematically to the, the album title. So, um, you know, obviously great, great photo, but we've got to make it kind of work with the design at large. So how do we do that? Um, let's layer it up. So the first thing I do, which will make a little more sense down the line, there's a there's what's called a layer mask on this photo. Uh, just looks like a little strip of kind of torn paper kind of form going across the middle. That'll make a little more sense down the line. Uh, this photo also has a little bit of a levels uh, uh, adjustment layer on it. So all that does is kind of just darkens up the darks, lightens up the lights. Uh, so it's just like a, a little bit more high contrast. All right, the next layer is actually a little bit of an Easter egg. Uh, this album was originally had a different kind of a different title, different art direction, and everything. And I had this illustration commissioned, um, which ultimately everything kind of changed direction. But I really liked the illustration. So as an Easter egg, I just popped it on our bartender as a, as a tattoo. Um, so that one's just kind of a little wink and a nod and something to entertain myself, really. Um, all right. So we talked about layer masks earlier, but watch what happens when I turn this layer mask on on, uh, on the uh, image group. Boom. Okay, so a lot more happening now. It looks kind of weathered and, um, you know, it kind of fades out at the top. It looks like an almost water damaged photo or something like that. But there's actually some functionality to it. As you can see, I framed this kind of suspicious or, or sinister looking guy, uh, framed his eyes, and it almost looks like a plane of vision that is, you know, uh, uh, settling on this bartender. So that was that was functional. Um, but I think it's just also a cool, you know, flavor, so, you know, the, this kind of ripped edge and the, the, again, the fade out it helps, helps blend the photo into the, uh, the, the cover at large. So now what we're going to be doing is, is doing some overlays to kind of bring this, um, this image, uh, to life a little bit. So the first thing that I did, and there's a lot of subtlety in some of these overlays. So this one is a, uh, kind of a texture vignette overlay. Um, it, uh, you know, as you can see, it kind of darkens the edges a little bit. Um, it adds a little bit of grain and a little bit of color, like a little bit of a sepia color to the image. There's off and on. Uh, and it just sort of, you know, there's that kind of, the, the vignette effect around the edges helps to kind of center some attention and spotlight the, the middle of the, the 
the piece a little bit, the design. And then on top of that, I have what's called a gradient map layer. And gradient map is a really cool function where you set a gradient, which is a fade of one color to another color or multiple colors uh, into each other. And those colors are mapped to the lights and darks of a photo. Uh, so as you can see, it's, it's an adjustment layer. So it's going to hit everything that's beneath it. So when I turn this on, okay, you can see here's the gradient. It's kind of that purple to pink, peach to light pink. Uh, and the, that spectrum of colors is applied to the darks, uh, the mediums, the lights. Um, one thing I've also done is change the blare, uh, the blare, the blend uh, uh, mode of this layer. Okay, so if it was normal, let's just move it to normal, you can see what it looks like. All right, it's kind of kind of cool. I mean, this could work in its own way. But um, it's also sort of flat and, it, and it's going to um, kind of drive down the focus of the image. And I wanted the image to really be heavily involved in this design. So that's why I, uh, I set it to hard light. Um, there's a lot of different blending modes, hard light, just kind of, you know, it, it sort of attacks the image with the, uh, with the adjustment layer and, and blends these colors kind of intensely into, uh, into the, into the image below. Uh, above that, we have a kind of an Easter egg layer, but really just, just a texture. These are actually lyrics from one of the songs, uh, that I, that I overlaid because I wanted to sort of, in a way, frame the drive the focus to the bartender. Now this is a little strong, so I added a texture mask to these to this lettering. And so you can see it's a lot less prominent. It's it's almost so subtle that you can't really read the letters and I'm okay with that. Um I just almost wanted it to look like somebody had you know you know maybe there'd been like ink that had faded over time or something like that, but the the overall effect is just really to drive interest to this bartender. Um, you know, if you look, it's almost like this photo is divided like this. You know, you have all these folks over here, and then you have this kind of main character over here. And there's a, you know, a ratio at play here uh, that that makes that pleasing. But I'm kind of trying to encourage that with the uh, the text overlay. So let's get rid of that guide. Uh, adding another overlay, this is kind of a, a brush metal texture. So I'm just going to show you what the texture looks like. See, it's just kind of a, a, a brush metal. Um, you know, you see there's a lot of little dings and scratches and stuff, a lot of character to this. So uh, once again, I've set a blend mode so that this won't just sit on top of it. It'll actually kind of integrate with what's behind it. Um, and uh, let's see how it looks when it turns on. Okay, so... You know, if you look closely, of course, it brightens it up a little bit, but you can also see where some of the dings and scratches from this uh, texture layer are integrating and uh, interacting with the background and kind of, um, you know, bringing some character and life to it. So, you know, it's almost starting to look more like that, uh, you know, really stylized uh, vintage photo. Uh, so that's that's the photo layer. And then above that, we only have a few other things. We have a photo filter, which, turn that on, and you see that, essentially, I just wanted to dull it down a little bit. I found that it was a little bit too technicolor. Um, I wanted it to be a little more faded, and I mean, this is just a very marginal adjustment. But, you know, I think, I think it helps. I didn't want it to be too vibrant. Uh, so this photo filter, uh, which is actually a sepia filter, uh, kind of encourages that. And then we have simple typography. I wanted to keep the type simple because, uh, you know, there's a lot going on beneath it. So I think you want to offset it with that simple type. I didn't want it to be too flowery or ornate um, and draw too much attention to itself beyond just what it says. Uh, but, of course, this typeface kind of has that, uh, you know, throwback feel to it, this kind of bold, thick serif. It looks like something you might have seen on an old uh, poster or something like that. Um, so very straight ahead, but, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it fits well in the, uh, in the kind of composition of this photo. You see this, uh, chandelier in the background kind of, you know, in a way underlining the, uh, the title matter. And I just kind of like that this, you know, staggers and jags poured out kind of floats above 
everything that's going on beneath it. So, um, you know, this is a, I think, I think a, a good design looks simple, but there's generally a lot of attention to detail and a lot of kind of hidden steps, uh, that really make it feel kind of unified and, uh, a little more, you know, thematically complete. So that's how, uh, that's, that's how we arrive at, uh, this final design. It took a lot of iterating, a lot of trying things and going certain directions that didn't work, but we're very pleased with, uh, this final product and can't wait to see it out there in the world. So, uh, be sure to check out this album when it comes out. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask.